In any kind of creative endeavor, you're only bounded by your creativity in most domains. In music, there's an infinite number of ways you can use the musical notes, the tones, the scales, the, the different instruments. The human body is, in one way, kind of different because we have one genome that encodes a certain number of genes. And for the first time, we can actually map human activity onto a bounded problem. But there are enormous chunks of biology that just remain unstudied. It is, in my opinion, the largest problem in all of biology. And that's what I've been trying to do over the last 25 years. I had the opportunity to start this organization called the Structural Genomics Consortium, and we said we're gonna go after each and every one of those genes one at a time. We decided to focus on the protein structures. What do they look like? It's a brick on which we can build further science. But then the question was, what makes a scientist work on a protein that no one's ever worked on before? And it wasn't that it was there. It wasn't even that it was implicated in a disease. It was that someone had made a research tool, a small chemical that modulates its activity, and shared it. And over the last 10 years, we've had the pleasure of working with 10 different pharma to create these new molecules explicitly to put into the public domain to seed research all around the world. Professors can use it, foundations can use it. If you're in Nevada, you can use it. If you're in Munich, you can use it. If you're in a company, you can use it. That's the idea of open science. I think there's been now 10,000 papers published with the molecules that we have given away to folks everywhere. We've studied many genes and proteins that are implicated in disease. One of them happened to be a, a, a protein that we knew was mutated in children with a very rare and fatal cancer called DIPG. The survival rate is almost zero, and it's because by the time the disease is caught, it's in many parts of the brain. Surgery is not an option. I mean, it's horrible. And the hypothesis was that if we created one of these blockers, it would help the children. And so to test that hypothesis, we needed to make a drug that can be given to people. And that, of course, has a whole bunch of other skill sets that we don't have, so we couldn't do it in our SGC organization. So we created an organization, a company, called M4K Pharma to do it. When you have a biotech company, implicitly people think, okay, who are your venture capital investors? What's your IP strategy? So we created the M4K Pharma differently. M4K Pharma has no investors and no one owns any part of the company. Companies like Charles River were super interested in, in participating in a project where they could show their capabilities, but also towards a good cause. And so we went to Cambridge, England, to talk to the, the chemistry team of Charles River, who then were so excited and they internally showed some innovation in terms of how they would do it. So my understanding is that each employee gets a certain fraction of their month to donate to a charity. But the chemist thought, wouldn't it be cool if we aggregated our charitable input and contributed to the M4K cause so that we could use our skills, I mean, they're incredibly talented, towards something that is charitable in its objectives. And it's just contributing to more knowledge. We're lighting up places in that dark matter one at a time. It's not whether it will happen. We will cure all diseases. We need to get there faster so more people are helped. To do that, we need to be able to figure out a way beyond me, beyond the SGC, beyond M4K, of other people taking the model and switching it from a curiosity to a movement.